very warm welcome to episode 57 of my Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I've got a quick update for you on what I've been up to in the Doll's House and I've actually managed to get the entrance hall and landing area almost complete. And I'm going to be starting off today by showing you what I've done in the entrance hall. I started by making sure the area was dust free and then glued the stairs into place lining the top stair up with the landing to give me a flush top step. I used a bit of masking tape on the underside of the stairs just to hold them in place and I'm going to leave that there to just to make them extra secure. I then glued the under stairs cupboard into place and for positioning just tucked it in under the stairs so that there was no gap along the angled stair part. So the stair sits a little bit further back at the bottom than I thought so that little bit of damaged floor will now need repairing and there's just a little bit of fill in there to do as well between the skirting and the stringer so I'll get that done and then just a tiny little bit of fill in along the angle at the edge of the skirting board part of the understairs cupboard so I'll do that as well but otherwise really pleased that they're now fitted into place and glued into place and nice and secure. So I now want to glue into place the radiator cover and I've actually just given this another coat of paint. I'd actually painted it white originally and I've just gone over with a thin coat of the natural calico just to make it match the wood of the stairs. That doesn't stand out so much now against the wall. So I'm really happy with that and that will go there and I'm now going to glue that into place and then I can cut the skirting and coving for this area. Okay so that's the radiator cover now glued into place and for positioning I just positioned it by eye so it was in the sort of centre of that wall there. I think that looks really nice as well. I got a little bit of glue on the wall above. So once I fitted all the skirting and coving, I could just go around and touch up the paint when I make those other little repairs to the bottom of the stairs. Okay, so that's the skirting cut. Just a little piece in there next to the radiator. I'm not putting a piece the other side of the radiator because obviously that can't be seen. And then along the back, I've just cut a straight piece so it goes into that corner and then it actually just tucks behind the piece of skirting at the bottom of the cupboard there so that will look nice and neat once that's in place and then a tiny little bit here in this final corner so I'm going to number those I all sort of number them going around from right to left so that I know where they go back and I'll be doing the skirting for the um, landing area above so it's really good if you sort of for your entrance hall put an E for entrance hall and then L for landing just so you know which bits go back in which room. So that's those and now I want to cut the cove in for this area as well. Okay so there's my first piece of cove in there going along up to the stair opening and if you're unsure what to do you can just cut it straight at your opening so that area there let's put my finger down there so that's straight up to the opening there so there's no angles or anything needed there and then if I just turn you round there's a lovely piece along the back which is holding itself in there and that's just going from the edge there of the stair cupboard so that's the straight cut and then I've done the mitre in the corner and then the longest piece here again just one mitre cut in the very end and then you just measure along to the outer edge of your room to the front of your doll's house and make the straight cut there so already just sort of holding that in place I think that looks really nice let's pop that bit in as well it just really finishes it off I think so that looks really nice so I'm going to take those down now and again I'll just pop some numbers on those and now I'm going to move up into the landing area okay so I just want to start by saying you may have noticed that the arch at the top of the window there is missing and that's because when I came to put the cove in along that back wall the cove in was deeper than the arch so all the arch was too high so I'm going to recut that a little bit thinner 
so that I can actually get a piece of cove in along the top and that was easier actually to do that than to try and make the cove in narrower because then obviously I'd have had to make all of the pieces narrower. Okay so I've actually cut everything here so I'll start with the cove in as I'm sort of aimed up the top there. Um, let me put the stairs in actually otherwise it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> So oh, I've missed out the uh, one moment. So I'd already sort of pre-cut that piece of stringer there, and then I've made a new piece here to go up to the top landing there, and then also the piece of skirting is up there, which I've cut to size. That all fits nicely together. So I'll just pop the stairs in again. So again, I've just done the straight piece of coving going along there to the stair opening. And then one straight piece going along the back above the window with the angle at each end. And then my longer piece here. So that was quite straightforward really, just the three pieces. And I've also done a piece to go at the back of the stairs. And I've done obviously the corner to join up with the piece that goes along the back there, that way round. But I've just done a straight end where it meets underneath the stairs because again you're not going to be able to see that once everything's glued into place, once the stairs are in and you wouldn't even be able to get your head in there to have a look. So that will just sit in that corner that's hidden behind the stairs there. So that's the coving pieces. And let me just move down slightly and show you the skirting. So again, I've done the tiny little pieces that go at the edge of the door there. One for that side as well, it's about three millimetres wide. And then let me just slot that into place, the sort of rail that goes at the top of the stairs there. And I've lined that up so that the two newel posts are next to each other, side by side. And then I've actually just cut a bit so straight one end and angled to then fit in with the stringer there. So that slots nicely in there. And then I've already got the top left piece in place. So I've just got a piece for the back, <laughs> which is there. And then a long piece and again a little bit at the edge of the door, which just went flying actually. So that's all of the skirting done as well. So it was actually easier and a lot quicker to cut than I thought because I was thinking about all these little bits and all the little angles but actually when you think about it when you've got your stairs in place there are areas that you can't see which saves you a mitre corner which is always good news. So I'm now going to take all of these back into my craft room, give them all a sand to be prepared for paint and then I can actually start applying the paint. So I'm just using a piece of 500 grade sandpaper here to sand the pieces and then I like to make a fold in it and get along the grooves in the moulding there, or the moulded part. Like that. And then I've also recut the arch to the window in there and this time I've actually just used balsa wood and I've cut against the grain just to make it a little bit stronger. So balsa is a very thin wood and although I don't like using it for doll's house furniture as it's a little bit too flimsy, I don't mind using it for fittings because obviously the stability then is coming from the wall that I'm actually going to be gluing that to. And because it's a thinner wood and easier to cut, I think I've got a nicer shape there as well. And I've just been and tried that into place with a piece of cove in above and there's now about three millimetres gap between the two, so I'm really pleased about that, even though this does now come down lower over the window. But it still looks really nice and runs on nicely with the square part of the frame that's already in place. So I'll paint that when I paint all of these pieces. But I'm just keeping that to one side so that I don't sort of knock it and chip any bits out of it. So 
So once you've sanded your pieces, just use a soft brush to remove the sanding dust and that will give you a nicer surface for your paint. Okay, so I fixed all of my pieces now to a couple of painting sheets. The arch that I've cut from Bolsa, I'm leaving loose. I don't want to stick that onto tape as actually taking it off will probably split the wood, so I'll just paint that loose on there. And it's 10 to 5 now, or 10 to woody walk time, so I'm going to leave these for today and hopefully get a chance to come back to them tomorrow. Okay, so that's all of my pieces now painted, and I did two coats on each piece, sanded in between and a gentle sand afterwards and then use my soft brush to get rid of all the sanding dust. And unfortunately I split the balsa frame as I was sanding it. I was being as careful as I could, but I still just cracked a little bit of this, um, you know, arch off here. But what I've done is just put a little bit of glue on, and then if you just press it together and hold it for a while, you should be able to get an invisible join. But that is one of the reasons why I don't really like working with balsa, just because it is so flimsy. And this is the 1.5 as well, so that's even more so than the, the thicker sheets. But that's now dry, and once that's dry, I can go and put that into place. And all of the other pieces as well. So the skirting is now in place in the entrance hall. And then what I'm actually just doing now is touching up the little areas of wood where the varnish had been removed. And to do that, I'm using acrylic paints in a mix of colours just to get that colour right, that nice sort of dark walnut colour. And the colours I'm using are Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Umber, Raw Sienna and Raw Umber. And I've just mixed a little bit of each on my palette and then just mixed them together until I've got the right colour. There's also a few little bits at the front of the floorboards here. So you can see I'm just really dotting it on really lightly, just using a small brush. And it's a really sort of handy technique if you've got any scratches in woodwork or anything on flooring or um, pieces of furniture. Because you can't always touch it up with the wood dye. It's not always just as easy as going over with another coat, especially if you've applied a finish as I had done with the clear wax. Okay, you just need to make sure you don't put too much on. I'm just blending that little bit in there. But because these floorboards have got a nice random effect anyway, it does blend in quite nicely with what's already there. So I'm sort of going to go through and see if there's any other little patches I need to touch up whilst I've got a little bit of the paint left and then I'll continue by attaching the coving in this entrance hall area. Okay so that's the coving fitted into the entrance hall as well. I'm really pleased with how that's looking and I've just got a little bit of filling to do especially in that far back corner there the mitres didn't quite join together how I wanted them to, but I can just pop a little bit of filler in there. And you know that I like to use the fine finish wood filler, which works really well with these smaller projects. And then I've also fitted the skirting, coving and the stairs into the landing area and put that window arch back into place as well. So that's also all looking really good. Again, lots of filling to do up there, just really where the coving doesn't quite sit properly against the ceiling and the wall. And I think we've talked about that before, where the strips aren't exactly square. So I like to push them up against the ceiling, but that does then leave you with a little bit of a gap along the bottom. I'm, I'm happy with that, but I do then like to fill in any corner joins. And again, that one just wouldn't quite butt up how I wanted it to. So I'll put a little bit of filler in there just to tidy that up. But otherwise, again, really pleased with how it all looks. Everything's glued into place, so it's now all nice and solid in there. Nothing sort of sliding around or moving around. And as I was sort of 
you know, standing there and holding all of the pieces into place just while the glue began to take. I've sort of been looking around into all the other rooms and seeing lots of little jobs that I need to do. Bits of wallpaper and things that are coming away at the edges of the rooms. So I can do all of that. I've just done this episode as an update because, as you know, I've done all of the um, skirting and coving videos before, so I didn't just want to repeat what I've done before but I just wanted to keep you updated on what I'm doing. So I'll get all of those little jobs done off camera and then in the next episode I can update you again just to show you what I've been up to. But really pleased with how it all looks. Glad that I got those bits of floor sorted out as well where the wood die had sort of come away where I'd accidentally sanded it at the bottom of the stairs there but it will be good now to get all of these little gaps filled. Another coat of paint on, plus paint over the areas where I was sort of measuring up for the window and I've accidentally drawn on the wall. <laughs> so I'm going to go around and really sort of look at all the little details and what I need to go over and sort of touch in and paint again or fill or what have you. And then I just need to get that piece of acetate in the back of the doll's house and I need to pull the doll's house out to do that so I've sort of been putting it off but I will try and get that done before the next episode. Okay so that's it for this update. I hope you've enjoyed it even though like I say it is things that we've done before but I do like to keep you up to date with what I'm doing. But that's it for today's episode so I'll see you again soon. Take care, bye!